looking for an easy way to take those in-person interactions, whether at a trade show or a conference, and easily move those new connections into your HubSpot CRM? Well, a digital business card technology might be the answer to just that. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a tool called Popple, which provides digital business cards, a mobile interface. There's so many tools on the platform, but it makes it possible for you to take those new interactions and instead of handing them a card and hoping that they call you back, we're gonna actually use this interface to exchange information and easily move that into your HubSpot CRM to power workflows, additional nurture, and more. Let's go ahead and dive in. Gonna be three parts to this video. The first part, we're gonna talk about the digital business card technology Popple. I'm gonna show you how it's set up, what to make sure you do to get the maximum results from your networking efforts. And then in part two, we're gonna show you exactly how it integrates with HubSpot, how to set up that integration. And then in part three, I'm actually gonna show you real live data that I have from an event that I was at using my, my digital business card and what that looks like, how that comes in for source data, and then actually a workflow that I set up that you can easily identify those people, put them into a nurture drip, so on and so forth. Now, just like I says here on their website, Popple is a digital business card technology, but it's really powerful when you put it to use as a team. So if you happen to be using HubSpot, there's a good chance that you have your sales team out there in the field, in person, at conferences and trade shows, actively making connections and leads, whether that's at your booth or maybe just one-on-one -on -one or at the happy hour. So this is gonna be a lifesaver. So the first thing you're gonna do is set up an account. And when you log in, the first thing that is going to be popping up, I already had this happen for me, so I'm just gonna pull it up as if it was the first time but you're going to set up your own digital business card here. So I'm gonna click into mine, and this is what it's going to look like. So here, you actually have all the things you need to specify what you want that digital business card to be. So if you happen to be an admin and you're setting this up for your team, you would set this up and then you can make this into a template to use with the rest of your team. Popple has a whole video about how to set up your team in Popple, so we're not gonna cover that here, but I'm just gonna go through some of the basics. So everyone has a profile picture, there's gonna be a background, so this is what pops up when someone scans the QR code and it pops up on their phone, this is what that looks like. So on the right hand side, this is what I've currently got set up. I can make it so that, it wants, that it's uh, portrait mode, so it doesn't show a banner, it just shows my, uh, uh, my picture. Again, center aligned, I've got that uh, banner up at the top and then left aligned. In this case, our banner was designed with words at the top, so left aligned doesn't work very well, so we're gonna keep this center aligned. And then we've got a chance to add pronouns here. You can add your location and then go ahead and add a bio. You can choose a theme. So if I wanted these icons to change and have a little bit more of a brand perspective throughout, I can actually change these and have it a little more uniform, maybe branded like you want this. So again, do what works for you. Now, as we go throughout here, the content, this is what you want to add to that digital business card. So just like the, the content or the, the information you have on a business card of the traditional sort, you can choose to do that here inside of this screen. And there's so many different things to add. So they've definitely thought about all the things that you might wanna share with someone. Don't overwhelm your prospects, but definitely put the stuff here that's gonna be super important. And then from a pop code, this is the thing that's actually going to pop up on the mobile app that you would use or you might share this on a presentation on a slide, or if you use their event technology, um, you can go online and see that they actually have an event uh, badge you can print. You might wear that and then people might actually scan that when they're talking with you in person. So this happens to be uh, the actual badge that would show up. I can download that. This is how I downloaded it to put it on a slide when I was speaking. And then again, <clears throat> people at the event scanned the badge on the slide. They got entered into my popple and then they eventually ended up in my HubSpot as leads from a speaking event, how awesome is that? Now the lead capture form is going to be, when someone scans this, this actually is what comes up on their phone. And so you're going to enter your information and so it would be your name, your email, and your mobile phone if you happen to be the one connecting with me. So once that happens, then they get an email with that information. That's what this looks like here. So you can actually add more fields if you want to. So let's say you wanna know uh, their job title. You might want them to select like, what are they interested in? The less fields typically the better. Four fields is usually about the max of what somebody wants to fill out. Because again, you're just exchanging contact information or trying to make it as seamless as it was to hand over a business card. So you don't wanna act like, give me seven pieces of information here. But these fields are what goes over into HubSpot and you can map directly. So keep that in mind. You can also add a hidden field if you want to. So a hidden field would be down here. So let's say that for the purposes of this event that you're going to go to, it's always going to be a trade show and you wanna name what trade show that is. You could use a hidden field or you could use tags, which we'll talk about here in a second as well. 
Now the virtual background, this is something that we could use if you wanted to have your popple code up on a, a Zoom call. That's a great way to, to share information uh, and the popple folks over there do this very well. You can put it in your email signature, so on and so forth. And then if I wanted to set this up just like I did here, assign it to a template where other people can use that same format, that's what Popple Teams does. Okay, so that's how to set up your Popple code is what it's called, but really this is your digital business card. And the last step before you move on is going to be downloading the Popple app. So when you do that, um, it's gonna have the same sort of functionality that you just had inside of your mobile or inside of your desktop screen, but now you can actually adjust some things, maybe add some more links in here. And then there's a way to save it on your desktop and save it onto your widget screen if you have iOS, the latest update. So it actually just shows right here. So I'm just, hey, here's my code. I don't even have to open this up. You know, uh, Nick and I from Popple were actually talking about this and it was like we set a timer and we said, hey, how, how long does it take for you to get to LinkedIn? And I had to click five times to get to the LinkedIn scanner. And here he just pulled up his phone and it was already there. He beat me. So it's that fast. All right, so number two, let's talk about integrating this with HubSpot. How does Popple integrate with HubSpot so that those leads that I'm connecting with get right over into my HubSpot and become activated so I can uh, nurture those relationships? So click on integrations and you're gonna see that there's a HubSpot integration available. There's a lot of other ones here as well if you happen to use these other tools, but this one happens to be the one that we're focusing on here. So when you configure your HubSpot integration, it's going to do a couple of things. So one, you can set it up to auto sync any new connections into HubSpot. And then you can also choose to manually uh, sync if you want to. So there's a couple things in here that are going away. So when they say do not use, don't worry about those, but let's start from the top. So for the auto sync, we're going to actually set up that the lead status, when those folks are newly connected to us, the lead status is going to be connected. Now this is gonna be based on your own personal data flow. If you don't have a data flow, don't know what you're doing here, you might benefit from a data journey workshop, something we do with clients, but typically with a lead status, when you've connected with someone, it's probably going to reflect that. The other one you might wanna consider is maybe that you would use the word new. So then who should be the owner of those? This is actually setting up the configuration for your entire HubSpot instance. So in this case, I'm the only one using it. So I set it to Ali at simplestrat.com. But if in fact I wanted to set that as uh, the person that uh, the user just met, so this would be like the HubSpot owner, as you can see here, would be the one that owns that. So custom mappings. Now custom mappings are going to be the additional things that you put into your Popple forms that you might wanna map over to HubSpot. So let's say one of those hidden fields was um, maybe you're only connecting with sales leaders. So you only share your contact information with sales leaders. So you could put a custom mapping to be job role is one that we have in our HubSpot portal and it would be actually VP of sales. So again, where to map those tags from Popple. So if you happen to have event tags, so I'm gonna actually go back a step and you can set up on your leads, you can set up what's called tagging. So if you're, again, at a trade show, at a conference, if you happen to have everybody who's connecting with someone using their digital business card within a three-day period, so for us, we go to Inbound, HubSpot's big conference every year, maybe we want everybody that we talk to at that conference to be tagged as Inbound so that we can report on anybody who's connected with us and we can actually then map that over to HubSpot and report on that data accordingly. So I'm gonna take a step back and go back to that integration because if we had set that up, the configuration we need to have in order for that to work is our custom mappings. We'd need to have a contact property that would be stated as such in order for that tag to go over. So it might be like our contact property in HubSpot might be inbound 2024, the map then has to go to that. So that's how we bring that information over. And then custom contact properties would be um, text you want to map here. Again, it's going to vary based on your use case, your company, but that's one more uh, opportunity that you can use as well. So we'll buzz by the, these here. Again, same sort of thing with this configuration onto the manual side of things. So if we turn this off at the top here and we actually just keep the bottom on, we can manually push contacts over to Popple as opposed to everybody. This might be a good feature if your sales team or if you use this to connect with everybody you've met, but you don't want all those folks to go into the CRM, you can manually choose who you push over to the CRM. I'll show you that here in a second. Same sort of thing, you've got the same custom mapping and the details you would set up. So same sort of process, but again, we can have auto or we can have manual depending on what type of uh, system you have set up on your side. So that's gonna be how the HubSpot integration works. So again, for that to really make sense, you have to think through your strategy of how am I gonna use tags? How am I going to use the properties in HubSpot? And how do I make sure that that information then gets ported over appropriately? And how do I wanna report on that 
because if you're using contact properties as the way to bring a tag over, you might actually wanna use that contact property to actually then drive a list membership, which is what you might use to report on. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. Now, what do you do with this information once it gets to HubSpot? What does it look like? So let me show you here what this looks like from an event that I was at last week. So this happens to be a list of five folks that were at an event that I spoke at and they all scanned my information and they came in and you can see that they have the date here and I had manual sync turned on. So I've got one of them exported and the rest have not. So let's say that I did want to export this over to HubSpot. I'm just gonna click on export to HubSpot. And now since it's set up and con configured properly, I'm gonna confirm that export and it's gonna go ahead and push that over to HubSpot. So that's as simple as it gets. And we can go take a look at what that looks like over in HubSpot. Now, key thing that, that also exists here is we do have um, the, the Popple app and it will give you a notification like, hey, you just moved somebody over to HubSpot. So that's great. Okay, so now we've got the two contacts that I chose to move over to HubSpot from the interactions in Popple. And here we've got that the lifecycle stage is set as lead and we've got the sources show up as this. So if they're already in your CRM, it's not gonna change the offline source because they were already in your CRM. But if they're created net new, your offline sources are gonna be the original source. The integration is going to be the drill down number one and drill down number two is gonna be Popple Digital Business Card. So when you report on this information, this tends to be a little bit of a tricky thing because actually, even though the original source drill down two says this, if you open a contact record, you'll see that you go to all properties and the original drill down source is actually this specific value. So that's a little bit of a trick. If you're having trouble trying to figure out how to find these people, because you can type in drill down source as popple and it's like, why aren't they coming up? This is why. So I'm gonna select this number and this number is actually what we use to filter those contacts. So let's open our advanced filter and you can see that drill down two contains that specific value. So that's what's actually driving the view of leads created by popple here on this screen. Now. Let's go ahead and dive a little bit farther. So I'm gonna open up one of these contact records and we're gonna take a look at this specific instance. And we're gonna see how this activity then propagates here in the middle column. So if I look at filter activity, I've got all these different things here, but if I just scroll down a little bit, you can see where this came from. So I've got the contact was created from offline sources integration, and then it was updated to lead. And then this is where I've got a note and a meeting automatically logged by Popple. So I've got a meeting connected via Popple, and then I've got a note by Ali Schwanke. These were both created by Popple. So if you happen to have that, uh, this is what it looks like for a net new contact. Now, Katie is someone that also scanned the, Q, uh, the code during the event, and she also gets updated with Popple, but she's not a net new contact. So in her case, we've got this meeting connected via Popple, and then a note for Ali Schwanke. So this is how that shakes out for someone who's already part of our uh, database, but you can see that they get a meeting logged by Popple as well. So let's say that any net new contacts that you have uh, in interacted with at an event, you wanna put them into a lead nurture or some sort of sequence or something to market to them afterward. That's a really good use case. So here's a very simple workflow you can consider. So for this one, we've got original source, so net new contacts that get pushed over from Popple into HubSpot. They're identified by that drill down source I just showed you. They're set as a marketing contact, which is key to actually get them into any marketing uh, related communication. You might schedule a follow-up task for the contact owner, which in this case, it might be reach out in you know a week and see how their time at the conference was, and then delay until the following week, and then they get an automatic invite to our next webinar. That would be a really good way to put those new contacts into something of a next step without having to personally go down and write every single email out to somebody after the event. So that's what it looks like to go from networking to the integration to HubSpot. But there's one more thing that I love to show and it actually exists back in Popple because if you're thinking, how do I use HubSpot to actually go back and send a nice to meet you email? Popple is actually one step ahead of you there. So when you connect with somebody over on the Popple platform, let's go ahead and look at what it looks like in our digital business card. To go there, you're gonna to go to members and you're gonna to go to yourself. And you can see that the email is called follow-up email. So what happens is when somebody scans your QR code or your digital business card, they actually get a follow-up email from you that's nice to meet you, anything else you wanna say. I love this so much because how many times, I know I've done this, where I've exchanged contact information with someone and then I forget who they were, how they got into my phone, what did we talk about? So you could definitely 
use this to your advantage. It goes to the email that they actually provided when they scanned your code. It goes to them with this subject. You can, audit, you can choose whatever you want to in the subject. You can use variables that make it possible for you to personalize, and then you can personalize this message. So if you wanna send a test to yourself, let's go ahead and send a test and you can see what this looks like. And we have a test lead name, first name, so it would be Ali Schwanke and whatever their name is, great meeting you today. And here, thank you for connecting, looking forward to chatting soon. This is not a great email, let's be honest, but in this case, we're already in their inbox and you've got a copy of their digital business card, or in this case, they've got a copy of your digital business card in their inbox. So that's it. That is a really powerful way to take your in-person networking, trade shows, and conferences and bring those two together so that they seamlessly go into HubSpot. Plus, if you do this really well, that question of what did we get from our attendance at that event should be an easier question to answer because you can run a report of net new leads generated through that third-party integration of Popple and report on that and link that to deal revenue. That's awesome. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button. And like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna set up that Popple account, we've actually got a link below this video. They also have more information about how to use it with your team, but give it a spin. Let me know what you think. Drop me a comment and we'll see you next week.